Hello and thank you for being here. This is your host, Positive Phil, with the Positive Phil Show. Are you ready to get positive? This is a place where we interview entrepreneurs, philanthropists, civic leaders, people making a difference, athletes, actors, good people. I'm about to have my neighbor Edie on the show because she brings light and joy to everyone she meets. And she lost her husband recently and she still smiles every day. And I said to her, I said, you're always smiling. She said, what else is there to do? Nina Vaca, she's an American entrepreneur, philanthropist, and civic leader. She joins us today on the Positive Phil Show. Let's listen to a clip of this amazing woman, person, human being, a mother, a wife. She sits on the board of a bunch of big companies, her company. She's best known as the chairman and CEO of Pinnacle Group. It's like a billion dollar company. Yes. And she crushed it for the past 20 years. Started with a few hundred bucks sitting on her floor in her apartment building. Yes, be strong and don't give up. Let's listen to a clip of our conversation. The things that make me smile are actually the simplest. It's the simplest things. It's the kind, it's a kind gesture. It's a, a handwritten note. Um, it's knowing that something I said affected someone, uh, especially if they're my children. You know, sometimes my mom will come, uh, my mom, my daughter will come home. She came home the other day and she said, Mom, I told my friends what you always say, because I always tell my daughters, nothing good happens after midnight. Nothing good happens after midnight. Or I'll tell them it's very nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And they actually listen. And so when I get a mentee or someone that writes me an email that says, hey, you know, you've inspired me or I'm doing things differently or, you know, those are the little things that fill my heart. What I do at Pinnacle absolutely feeds my family. But what I do in my community, it feeds my soul. It's good to have that soul fed. I love good people. Thank you so much for being here. This was written by Pamela Renfro. Be strong and don't give up. Remember, there is a deeper strength and an amazing abundance of peace available to you. Draw from from this well. Call on your faith to uphold you. Life continues around us. Be confident in yourself. And when our troubles seem to stop time, there is always good in life. Take a few minutes to distract yourself from your worries, from your concerns. Long enough to draw strength from a tree or to find pleasure in a bird's song. Return a smile. Realize that life is a series of levels, cycles of ups and downs, some easy, some challenging. Through it all, we learn. We grow strong in confidence. We mature in understanding. The difficult times are often the best teachers, and there is good to be found in all situations. Reach for the good, be strong, and don't give up. Woo! That's what we do here at the Positive Phil Show. (laughs) I love what I do. I I have like a tear crawling down my cheek right now. I'm so happy. So let's put our hands together for Nina Vaca. And check her out right now. Google her. N-I-N-A-V-A-C-A. Hello? Hi, Nina? Yes, this is Nina Vaca. Hi, Nina Vaca. This is Positive Phil. I have a huge smile on my face because I am super excited that you're here. (laughs) Well, I have a smile on my face as well. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for the kind invitation. This is awesome. So I interview entrepreneurs. Um, uh, I interview one of them a day. 
and at times I don't at times I researched the person a half an hour before the meeting and I was at the gym today um, about two hours ago and I pulled out your information and I just cannot believe how successful you are. <laughs> Don't believe everything you read, Phil. It wasn't just reading. I watched videos of you. I mean, you started with $300 a long time ago in your apartment on the floor, just crushing out, trying with a dream, and look at the things you've accomplished. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been an incredible journey, a long, hard road. You know, when I look back, I can't believe, I mean, today we're, we're, we're celebrating, it seems like, so much. But, you know, I always tell people there is no such thing as an overnight sensation. It took us 20 years to get here. So thank you for that. Now, along the journey, you know, everybody talks about the journey. And at times I focus on the destination, and my son said to me the other day, and he's 10, he goes, will you miss the struggle? And I looked at him, and I'm thinking, well, you know, the struggle, the journey isn't always easy. Um, how, yeah. how, how do you do it? Where's the motivation come from? Well, for me, my motivation has been, um, you know, honestly, the same. Uh, I started Pinnacle with purpose. Uh, like a good entrepreneur, I found a need in the marketplace, and then I filled it, but my purpose has not changed. Um, it's just evolved a little bit. When I first started, my purpose was to change my family circumstances. You know, I'm one of five children. We lost our father when we were very, very young. And I wanted to, um, I wanted to change the circumstances in the future of my family. And who would have thought that that purpose and that dream, now I ended up wanting to change the future of, you know, hundreds and thousands of families that we touch you know, with Pinnacle and then the hundreds and hundreds of thousands that we touch with our community work. So the purpose is still the same. It's to help others achieve the American dream. And that's what we're all about. That American dream, it's alive. Oh, it sure is. You know, I watched a video. It was a two minute video. Well done. And it brought a tear to my eye, and I'm here at the 24-Hour Fitness watching this, and it was how you lost your father, and you had this entrepreneurial, uh, your whole family was entrepreneurial, and how you started, and you know, the telephone and making connections, but you noticed that that's not what you mm -hmm. wanted to do. You wanted to do something different. Um, how, do you, how did you find out what you wanted to do? It's just the need in the marketplace? Is that what took you there? Well, you know, I'm sure the bio says that, you know, I'm some sort of genius that figured out that workforce development and information technology would be key in the 21st century. The reality is I'm a good entrepreneur. I grew around, uh, I grew up around entrepreneurship. I grew up with a mentality that entrepreneurs see um, things when others do not. And I started my career in technology because the first computer I saw was in my father's travel agency. It was a Sabre system. Um, and I started my career in New York in IT. And I just, honestly, I, I just realized there could be a tremendous need for many, many years to come. It was a stable opportunity because the technology industry was growing by leaps and bounds. And we were migrating as a country from the mainframe computer onto a Unix box of course, now we evolved from Unix to Windows and Windows to the cloud and so on and so on and so on. But for the last 20 years, you know, the need for IT talent has, has just continually increased. So there's a little luck in there, too. I think we all find our own luck, or at least we have our eyes open for it. Um, I sent this headline to my mom before the interview because I, I was so, I'm so excited. I said, Mom, and here it is. Nina Vaca, daughter of immigrants, now runs a $650 million firm. And this was a few years ago. Um, this is impressive. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I wish I, uh, you know, thank you. I really appreciate it. I, I have to tell you, I, I take very little credit because what I've learned in my 20-year journey is that people build businesses. And so it would be unfair for me to take 
the bow. I, the, the bow really belongs to the men and women that have, you know, steadfast uh, been just so on fire for the last 20 years by my side, creating one of the fastest growing companies in America. Yeah, let's chat about that. Um, I just, I don't think we have enough time to list all of your awards. And, oh my goodness, here's a picture of you with your arm around President Obama. I mean, this is great. Um, It's all about the people behind you. You are a visionary, it seems to me. Do you have any tips? I mean, what does a visionary need? What type of trait, a leadership trait? Is there, are there any leadership traits that stands out that you need to be a good leader? Well, for me, having a purpose, um, number one. Number two, for me, it's always been about building something larger than yourself. That's the way that you're going to galvanize people. If you're focused on your people, uh, creating something larger than yourself and really focused on them, I always say that, you know, when you're on the right path, the world can inspire to help you. And people will not join you if you're really out for yourself. If you're really out to build something larger than yourself and you're willing to contribute yourself and your success then to helping others achieve that, you know, that's really been uh, the hallmark of what we do. And so I have found that, um, again, we've been on the right path, and I've been so blessed to have so much support. Our community support has been unwavering, and I feel like I stand on so many shoulders. So we are rock solid. For the last 20 years, we've been building a sustainable, scalable, you know, pillar in not just our community and our city, but hopefully in our nation, too, and someday the world. You're changing the world. It seems like that's your ambition is to make a mark, huh? <laughs> it sure is. You know, President Obama, I, I, I have great gratitude uh, to him for appointing me a presidential ambassador of global entrepreneurship because in that role, I was able to represent the White House in five different continents. And, you know, last year alone, I was in Bahrain. I was in Vietnam. My first trip was to Ghana. And I just, everywhere I travel around the world, Phil, there is a hunger and a desire for entrepreneurship. People want to be self-made. They want to create things. And I'm just so privileged that President Obama thought highly enough about my story, our story, that we could use it as an example to inspire others. Obama. <laughs> I like Obama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, my son is 10, like I mentioned earlier, and he said to me the other day, because I was reading this 40 under 40 or 30 under 30. And he said, is there a 10 under 10? I said, yes. And we started Googling all these kids, even. They said one out of three um, Americans are entrepreneurs. Um, You have a lot of failure. You have a lot of entrepreneurs that say they're entrepreneurs because they have a website. But I truly think you have to live by like this, this, People read through people, and I think to really start a business, I don't Mm -hmm. care what you're selling, you have to create some type of credibility, and I think that's tough at times. Yeah, that's another trait I would have I would have talked about. Um, Credibility is is incredibly high, if if not one of the most important things. When Pinnacle was much smaller, and um, we were bidding for work with Fortune 500 companies, our credibility had to be untouchable. And in this case, my personal word. So I would literally look at the chief procurement officer in the eye and say, you know, failure is not an option. I will over-deliver. My team will over-deliver. And by over-delivering, we started building credibility and building credibility and building credibility because, you know, we were nothing. We were just a company started out of my living room floor. And it took us years to build a rock solid credibility because the customer base that we do business with probably some of the hardest, you know, when you think of the, the, the AT&T's, the Verizon's, you know, the capital ones, the Comcast, I mean, these are very large conglomerates that demand excellence. I mean, they're leaders in their industry and they want to partner with leaders. And so credibility, you're right. Above all has been one of our signatures of, um, of growing the business. How many employees are under all your businesses? Because I know it's the Pinnacle Group, right? And then you have a couple other businesses within that? Yeah, 
so we've kind of, you know, again, I call it we've evolved. Uh, some of it is in, um, it's synergistic to the workforce development or IT staffing work that we do. We have an MSP division that manages suppliers. We have a payrolling division. We also have, I'm, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, so we're invested in MyPlate, which is the organization, the company that basically we partnered with the legislature in the state of Texas to create the only um, entrepreneurial partnership, and we actually sell and market the license plates in the state of Texas, and that's MyPlates.com. So we've diversified our portfolio quite a bit, and today we're the pinnacle group, but most of it is synergistic in workforce um, solutions to our customers. So how many employees? At, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to answer no, the question. I'm just, that would have been a good I'm question. Just... So, <laughs> that would have been a good question. So there are about 150 people that run the business and about 5,000 employees, give or take by a couple hundred. Because remember, we get to staff up or down, sometimes by the hundreds, because we have a payrolling division. And we could have a customer say, hey, Nina, I need you to payroll 100 people tomorrow. Put them on your books. Make sure you take care of them. Make sure... You indemnify us, make sure you offer them benefits that are ACA approved, make sure you take care of them because we're going through a major acquisition and we're not sure where all the chips are going to fall and how we're going to do that. That's, that's one example. So um, across the United States and Canada, there's about 5,000, we call them contractors. Uh, many of them are W-2 naturally because we're a staffing firm. And 150 to 155 people run corporate headquarters in Dallas, Texas. I'm just exhausted li- uh, listening to this. Um, does this ever stress you out, having all this responsibility? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The life oh, of yeah. the and, and in my deepest, darkest moments, in my deepest, darkest moments, I would, um, I would confess to you, and, hey, that's what these interviews are about. They're about being vulnerable, and they're about being real, and I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you that sometimes I feel I have the weight of the world on my shoulders, particularly being a woman, being a minority, I cannot fail. Failure is not an option because when people see me, they inspire an entire generation, an entire community, and we need to be successful, not just for ourselves, but for the community that we represent. And so I take this as serious as a heart attack, Um, maybe sometimes a little too seriously but you know every day is a work in progress one day at a time that's what my grandmother said to us at a very young age my sister has that tattooed in my grandma's signature on her arm one day at a time it's the truth you're kidding <laughs> you're kidding <laughs> That's one thing. So Grandma knew what she was saying. Yeah. Grandma must know sometimes how I feel. I love you, Grandma. She's listening. (laughs) (laughs) uh, I love you, Grandma. They're always wise. (laughs) Let me uh, read off some of these awards. Uh, 2017, 50 Most Powerful Latinas. That's you. Uh, Women of Distinction, Women's Business Enterprise. Fastest Growing Women's Owned Business. This is exciting for you. Now, you must have something inside of you, this passion that you want to share everything that you have with this, with the entrepreneurial community, but more focused, let's say, on women, Latino women? I am. I'm very, very, very passionate about helping entrepreneurs naturally because when you look at my family history, entrepreneurship is the way my parents found um, their American dream. I'm very passionate about women as well, because oftentimes as I've climbed this proverbial ladder, I seem to be the only, the youngest, or um, the one of very few, or the first. And it's just unacceptable to me uh, to be the only, the first. And, um, and I want to change that. You know, I, I really believe that, you know, it sounds like a cliche, but you've heard our mothers tell us that success is a responsibility. Um, I'm serious about that. You know, we we need to, once we reach the occasion and get our seat at the table, we must utilize that in order to inspire and help others succeed. Because being the first, the only, the youngest, that's not going to propel an entire community forward. You know, as immigrants, we have an incredible love for this country. And I feel like we have an obligation to bring our best self and be contributors to this country. And so that's the way I live my life. And that's the way I honor my father. Oh, I love this. I, give me a hug if you could through the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So I, I, I'm just on the Google image search, and there are this, you have this big smile on a lot of pictures. Uh, what makes? What are a few things that make you smile? You know, the things that make me smile are actually the simplest. It's the simplest things. It's the kind. It's a kind gesture. It's a, a handwritten note. Um, it's knowing that something I said affected someone, uh, especially if they're my children. You know, sometimes my mom will come, uh, my mom, my daughter will come home. She came home the other day and she said, Mom, I told my friends what you always say, because I always tell my daughters, nothing good happens after midnight. Nothing good happens after midnight. Or I'll tell them it's very nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And they actually listen. And so when I get a mentee or someone that writes me an email that says, hey, you know, you've inspired me or I'm doing things differently or, you know, those are the little things that fill my heart. What I do at Pinnacle absolutely feeds my family. But what I do in my community, it feeds my soul. It's good to have that soul fed. Oh, it sure is. It makes it makes all the the hard times worth it. I mean, because believe me, it is a journey, and not everything is always rosy. Not everything is glamorous. Of course, the Google images that you'll bring up, everybody's smiling, everybody's got their best outfit on. But the reality is that you know, there's a lot of uh, of you know stuff that explodes, things that happen, bad news here, stress over there, a meeting there, and so. There's a lot that happens kind of behind the scenes. And so I always try to look at the glass half full. I'm always smiling because every day that I wake up and I have a loving family, um, you know, there's, there's every reason to smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Absolutely. You, you're making me smile. I love your story. I love what you're doing. You have some passion. This is one question that I do have when I'm, I mean, I have some great entrepreneurs and, I had this corporate job and I just, I felt unfilled and this is it for me. I love talking to people like you. So now I can say, here is an interview and I can go and send it to schools and um, organizations and students uh, so they can perhaps, you know, get a little bit of your motivation. Um, but you've built yourself this big company and you're doing stuff in the community um, what about just uh, stopping because you already have like, you know, a lot of success. You ever think about just stopping going on vacation for the next 20 years? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I have thought about smelling the roses a little bit more again, in all honesty, uh, you know, I'm, I am extremely energetic uh, mentally and physically. I'm a triathlete. I'm, I'm training for a half Ironman right now that I'm going to do in Ecuador in order to raise ha houses. It's my home country in order to raise some money to build some homes after the earthquake uh, last year. And so I tend to have a tremendous amount of energy. But yes, um, I don't think I would ever stop because I think like education, this is a lifelong journey. It's not like you make it and you're done. I, I think that finding balance and more and more balance for my children and my family is always a great idea. But again, the work that I do in the community is so important, and in fact, it's so vital. I feel like a commitment. That's why I accepted the opportunity to be a Henry Crown Aspen Institute Fellow this year, along with 20 other of my colleagues, where, you know, we are encouraged to make a dent in society, to help build a good society, and to help use our, our platform, our talents, our influence, what, what we have to build a better society. And so I am very steadfast on STEM. Um, I shouldn't say STEM. I should say STEAM, but science, technology, engineering, arts, and math Ooh, um, like are going to play part. a very – you got to throw the arts in there because if you're just stem then you're missing out because the arts brings in the innovation, the self-expression, the creativity, and, you know, the technology. I mean, even on the fringes of technology, look what – you know, we've been able to do, can you imagine 80% of the vast new jobs in the next 10 years are going to be STEM related. 65% of elementary school students are, are going to be doing a job that doesn't exist yet. It is going to change before our very eyes and it's going to happen fast. And so if we're not creating a pipeline, 
particularly in our underserved communities, um, a good pipeline, an educated pipeline, a STEM pipeline, then we're going to find our country moving farther and farther down the line. And that's not acceptable to me. I am a proud American. And so to add, to answer your question, I don't think that I'm ever going to like say, see, yeah, I'm done. I'm out of here. I think that, you know, I'm going to use the talents that God gave me to make a better society. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love what you're doing. I love it. I love what I'm doing. So this is fantastic. Right. After I love, lunch, I love I get... that you're happy. <laughs> Uh, so the Aspen Institute. You know, I actually, I'm really impressed with what you're doing. I have great respect for people that dedicate their lives to supporting um, others, and, and that's definitely what you're doing. And I'm, I'm glad that you feel fulfilled because my story is not unique. There's so many stories out there. I get to see them because I travel the country, and I get to hear all these amazing stories of amazing people. And so to someone who wants to vocalize and and create awareness about entrepreneurship and all the great things that are happening in this country, my hat's off to you. You're awesome. I try to change the world one conversation at a time. It's just my part. <laughs> I, I need to do something while I'm here. Love it. Love it. I'm happy that you're happy. And you, you're a mother with four children, it says? I do. I had four children in six years. Wow. You're just going after it. I recommend life. it, but I, I, I'm just a glutton for punishment. Everything I do is at like a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> Keep going. Keep changing. What's one thing that you would like to see changed in the world? Um, in the world. Wow, that's a heavy question. Um, that's a heavy question. You know. I think in the most simplest form, there's a lot of challenges in the world today. If you're taking it, you know, if you're taking it across borders from the United States and saying the world, there are a lot of challenges. I mean, you name it, global warming. We talked about pipeline for technology, the level of education. I mean, there is, I, the list goes on and on. It, it's just so much, so many challenges going on in the world that if I had to change anything is I would make everyone realize that their part matters, that every, if everyone will just use their God-given talents to build a better society, we will actually have a better society. And if you look back in the history of our world, that's exactly what has happened. So I want to make sure that sometimes people feel like, well, I can't contribute the way Mark Zuckerberg did or Reid Hoffman did. And, and my answer is everybody has something to contribute, even if it's small, but if we all understand that and embrace that, then we can make a better world. You're absolutely, you know, a smile, even a simple smile can just shift the course of someone's day, could bring a million possibilities. Just one smile, just with a stranger. That's exactly, exactly right. So how can we find you, Nina Vaca, online? <laughs> so one of the things one of the things I've done is um, I have, and I'm, I'm so thankful to Kiplinger who actually printed it in our interview that's on newsstands now, is I've launched my personal website. It's called minavaca.com. And it's not just inspiration, it's inspiration and information. So I want to give people the, the recipe, right? If you want to be a Henry Crown Fellow, here's the application. If you want to be WeBank certified, here's the application. If you'd like to apply for scholarships like with Dartmouth and Tuck like I did, here's the application. So I want to give, it's not enough for me to inspire people. Now I want to give them the recipe. And so I want my website to be a resource, a place where people go to get inspiration, but more importantly, to get information. So we're building every day. It's not perfect, but we had to launch it. And every day we're building on how can we be a central vocal point or a central point of all the stuff that I'm involved with, because I'm involved with quite a bit <laughs> even if it's hey i want to run a 5k or hey i want to do a triathlon here's how you do it i love it well when you are ready to start your own podcast you come to me i'll set it all up for you just just because you took the time to be on the show i think uh you know you behind the mic with your voice and your passion woo, can change a lot of people's lives <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, thank you, Phil. Thank you so much for the kind, kind gesture. I will absolutely, you know, I'm always thinking of creative ways that I can touch more people. And um, I'm hoping that through this interview, together, you and I, we can actually do just that. One day at a time. Thank you so much. And I will <laughs> see you soon. All right. Take care. You too. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. God bless you. Bye-bye.